It is a late night. Let me clearly check in because you can see our fish tank is turned off because it's after midnight. And it's the fish needs sleep too. So I actually have stuff to show you this week. Although a lot of what I've been spending my time on this week is planning. And it's it's kind of weird because I usually don't plan this in depth. I will sit down usually end of October, between mid-October and mid-November, and do like basic planning, like here's what the classes I want to work on, here's this what I want to work on, here's blah blah blah. I think I will, sorry, just looking for things here. Um, I will get the basics of, okay, you know, I want to put out this many workshops, I want to do this many mini classes, I need this free class, that kind of thing. And that's not what I was doing. Because, um, what was it, three or four months into 2016, all of a sudden I just kind of went, no, that's not what I need to do this year. A lot of what I need to do this year is just sit back and stop and stop trying to put stuff out. And it comes back to my word of the year. And my word of the year was deepen. It's I needed to step back and deepen my connection with not just my work, but with my home, with my family, with myself. Because I'm coming out of a very deep, dark phase, and the light's starting to come in now. I'm, I'm actually able to do things that I'm really enjoying. Um, I will try to remember to link to it, but it's on my blog somewhere in the sidebar, if you want to look. I have a new website that's under construction. Uh, I still need to go back and finish the pictures for the family website. <laughs> But on my own personal website, I'm, I still have stuff on the family website. That's where I'm going to put my art and everything. But my workshops, my actual classes, are all going to be on my other website. And it's, I'm going to say it's tabithabeck.weebly.com, but I'll link it if I remember. Um, excuse me. I mean, I have like summer colds here, so. I apologize if I'm snorting or coffee. I, I feel this need to clear my throat a lot, which hot tea, there we go. Um, so that is a lot of what I've been doing is that whole sitting down and going, okay, I've got the family website, I've got my website, I have my blog. The website, my, my website and my blog are two different things. They're connected, but not together. One is because I don't like Weebly's integration for their blog, and two, I really like my blog. Plus, that's like the whole difference between a blog is my personal space, this is my workspace. You can go back and forth between the two, see what a fruit loop I am. That's fine. But, but I just I wanted to have that kind of separation, and because originally I was thinking, well, I've got the I've got my blog, and I, I own the domain. It's this is my side of the mirror.com. And originally, I was just going to put everything on that, and I went, it doesn't feel right. And I went, okay, well, let me just revamp the family website. I kept getting, no, the family website is the family deal. And every time I put something else on it, I felt like I was taking everybody else's energy and going, no, I want you to look at my stuff, and I really want you to look at everybody's stuff. So that's why I have a new website, and it's still a work in progress, but I'm getting there, and I'm really enjoying it now. What did I do this week? <laughs> I actually have an artwork to show you that has not appeared on the board yet. And I'm just going to do me a note of it because I actually have four things to show you. Okay, so if you follow on Instagram, which we haven't posted much of anything because my daughter got interested in something else and now she's doing something else, so I don't always remember to get everybody together and go, hey, two minute fork self retreat. But we still do do them occasionally. And if you remember, I started out doing them in charcoal and coloring them with just soft pastels. I really like that. But then I wanted to start expanding because I still want to use this journal for two minute portraits. But this is a Sharpie. Now, in charcoal, I can kind of erase some stuff, I can blur some stuff, I can make it look like shading. When you use Sharpie, you be stuck. <laughs> and I have it, oops, this is just the card that I use to put in between the pages. Um, but when you use Sharpie, you're kind of stuck with what you get. See, like that line on her face? Yeah. 
unless I paint it, which I'm not planning to do, and there's no real way to get rid of that. So that's just going to be part of her charm, or maybe I'll you know, doodle over it or do something that makes it look integrated. <laughs> I can tell you cool I are. Look at that. All right, don't ask me. That's my toddler's cup. He brought it to me. It's over here. I don't know why. I don't ask. I try not to. He might actually explain it to me at some point. Yes, this is another project. These are dressing knobs for my son. I need to paint them right into the stall and then for his dresser. My oldest son, not my toddler. This is my book block. We discussed the book block here. I don't know why I'm so disorganized because my toddler will just come and randomly hit me things. And yes, he will walk around with these and brush his teeth all day long. Why they are over here? Thank you, Jenny. Now, the book block that we were just discussing, usually, excuse me, usually I have it right in front of my laptop, which is what I'm on right now, and I have a keyboard, and I put my key. Don't ask why I have a laptop and a keyboard, okay? It works for me. <laughs> but I put my keyboard on top of the book block. And sometimes I will sit there and doodle at random. And this is when, uh, this is actually not even a two minute self portrait, and it was done with Big Ben because I was honestly, I think I was on the phone, I was doing something, waiting for something, and, um, I just started to doodle, and usually when I doodle on these pages, because the book is so old, I don't just leave them, I will glue them down into another journal, so they're in an altered book journal, which is kind of funny for me, I have book pages glued down in the book, it entertains me, especially when I pick one that I already pre-painted, it's just And this is what I am now calling my my butterfly pop pop journal. You remember I've talked about this poor thing. And this is what I've done. And it's very interesting. If you've seen this one on Instagram, the background used to be well, the background originally was black because I had extra black paint from something or another, and I smeared it on there. And when it was time to start my new moon spread, this is my new moon spread. <sighs> yeah, there's some Latin on it. I'm going to scan it and post it to the blog. You can read it for yourself. I just like the texture. It's just neat. I don't know how much you can see. I guess I bet I can see it. But if you see like the blue texture up here, it's colored pencil. I took colored pencil and like played with it on top of the paint. And it turned out wicked cool because I don't know if you can see the paper, the paper itself. Yeah, you probably can't, but I swear that the, the, the paper itself has texture. So the colored pencil picked up the texture of the paper. It's really cool. I said I wasn't good. And this is my lungs. Yes, that is a mermaid's tail. That is not her hair. Uh, it was just an interesting experience because honestly, I started laying down my underpainting and my undershading, which I don't always do. I honestly started by painting this half of her face one color and this half of her face another color, which you can kind of see. I kept the green in the hair and in the tail, and it was meant to be part of the shading process. But after I was finished with it, I looked at it, and I went, no, it really, really works. And I kind of left it at that. And yes, there's actually bright knuckles up along here that my lovely, wonderful Sharpie. I'm like, okay, I'm going to make something that goes all the way up over here, and the only place the ink actually took, my Sharpie only works half the time, and on some angles. Because it's old, it's mean, and it's crazy. And I have a tendency to use it over wet ink. 
or what I consider dry paint and it considers wet paint, this is completely dry. I made sure. <laughs> and it still has the Sharpie just kind of keep. But yeah. Um, I have been going through such processes. And the other thing, this is my Stardust journal. I call it Stardust. It's a handmade journal that I made. Um, and at one point, I do believe I said something about the water, the paper in it having been mixed media paper and not watercolor paper, and I didn't like that. And now that I'm into it and I'm doing this sort of thing, I like it. But the one thing I want to say is that is the very last spread in this book, and then I have a journal paper. It's kind of scary because I've had all the shoots, and for me to actually be doing faces in my journal is like. Not like a stretch, like, oh, I can't do faces. <sighs> you can't even see all the faces that I have up here. Let me start all about the kiss. Oh, I probably have told you about it. I just haven't showed you because it's not done. But this will be a final journal when I'm done. I want to decorate this part first, I will show you because you're like, what is flapping on that? I will show you. These are my signatures. They are actually done, uh, I want to say, 20 pound paper. I mean, this is not, I was not going for, I was going for a writing journal more than an art journal. Well, it's maybe a little, maybe 50 pound. Yeah, maybe 50 pound. It's not, there's no one. It's basically computer paper, a step up from computer paper, and not like ink card stuff, you know. But it has, can you see? It's very, very cool patterns. I have all my signatures made. And these are pages from another book, or pages. These are the covers from a different book. The book block of Brigandra, because I actually took it apart and hey, it's some of the stuff's kind of cool, I want to read it. And it's interesting when I start getting into Bible verses going, why don't people read this part of the Bible? You know, if you're going to start quoting that thing and using it to condemn people and kill people, then you should at least read the whole thing that tells you, don't do that. And here's why. But people will be people. Now, what I did with this is I took off the covers, but I left the end pages in. So there's like two, maybe three pages here. And what I'm going to do, this might be the um, so this is actually the back cover. And this, this is not actual duct tape, this is actual fabric tape. Or well, some kind of duct tape. It's just not like duct tape, duct tape. What is it? Hold on, I'm looking for the English. This is the, okay, fine. It's a duct tape that has fabric in it. This special order, because nobody carries it. Because they look at you like, what? Gaff tape, people. How hard is that? We have no idea what you're talking about. Shh. All right, I'm going on. Here about me. Thank God for my boyfriend. He found it cheap because I was about to pay 15 bucks for that, and he ended up paying like three. Oh, but I have my end papers. You can see the tape comes over here. My intention is to glue those two pages down, decorate the whole cover. Hmm. No, that is not my intention. My intention is to decorate the outside and cover all the edges and fold it in, then glue those pages down there, and then buy my book, and it will be a Coptic bound book, because I am so nervous. I am looking at my other journals that I made, going, it won't be too hard to switch you guys up. You can even use the same ones I've got. And I found a video online. I don't even know where it came from. It was about someone who made, who took just recycled cardboard and um, put paper mache on it and turned them into clay boards and then like, made covers out of the same thing, only a little thicker, a little more heavily decorated, and drilled holes down through, just straight down like this, and basically bound it up with a slip knot through every hole. I'm like, oh my god, that is so brilliant. And I know there's no way I'm going to be able to find out what that video was because some people blog hop 
I video hop. I turn on YouTube and I let autoplay play and then stuff comes up and I will like it. But that doesn't mean I can find it again. But that I loved. And she had an entire, oh, if I can find it, I will try to find it for you. Because she had four video tutorial. And um, I'm so not going to be helpful because she was doing a mandala journal, so it was square. But I just love the fact that she made the pages and then it was a basic slip knot binding. I want to do that. So, that's pretty much the only other thing I have. Oh, I have to tell you about these because these are weird and I am not sure how I feel about them. But these are called Fairy Tale Fortune Cards. And I know it's backwards, I'm sorry. But it's by, they are created by Liz Dean. There are, I think, 36 cards. Uh, Half Price Bookstore had their first annual clearance event here in St. Louis recently, and my daughter found these for a dollar. And they said they wanted to work with me. And I went, okay. And they're very interesting. Because when you open these cards up, see, you're going, oh, look, a box. And, you know, the, what is it? Fox and the Scorpion, maybe. Let's see, we have the lily, the tree, but you have all these things like the moon, the path, the child, the sun, the clouds, the bird. And it's it's got a good energy. It's a very interesting energy, but I'm not sure how I feel about reading with them because even though this is how I work. I told the deck. <laughs> this is how I'm going to lay out the cards. This is what I'm looking for. Here is my question. Uh, they're not this they're not the fairy tales that you think. Like the path is um, little red cat strays from the town. The bluebird is um, well the bird is the bluebird tail. Uh, the, the snake is the snake prince. Um, the ship is three ships and th the three ships and the three brothers. And the lily is the lamenting lily flower. Have you read that one? Let's see the sun. The bright sun brings it to light. And it's just one of those where it's like, I know some of these because I collect fairy tales. Some of these you just don't find anywhere else. And they're very, they're very good, very positive cards, very happy cards. But when I do a read, if I pull more than one card, I am sat looking at it. I sit looking at it going, what are you trying to say? <laughs> and they're really cute. But it really does. It really has such a good energy to this deck. That it was just one of those things. But I pulled a reading for the month of August. Because I'm like, ah, oh, you know, that's one of those things I want to start doing. You know, I want to pull, because I pull them for myself, why should I not, you know, add that somewhere? It's like, whether it be a video or a blog post or something, why don't I pull a card and do a couple cards and do a reading, you know, pull three cards and there's your, your overview for the month. Only I pulled these three cards and I looked at them and I went, I don't get it. I don't understand what you're trying to say here. I'm like, I pulled a four card as a combination card and I looked at it and I went, that didn't help me. That made it much more complicated. And what was interesting, as I put them away, is that's, you know, I don't, I work with them here and there, but not too much. But, you know, that's over here. But the deck that I normally work with is the Mother Mary Oracle cards by Alana Fairchild. I love them. And I got them originally. Because Shiloh Sophia does the artwork. And I love Shiloh Sophia. I'm not going to say that I understand 100% where she comes from. Because I'm not her. And, you know, it's not like I've lived with her for 20 years and heard her message. I've worked with her. I understand the message that she's given to me. And I understand some of her process and where she's coming from. And I have a deep appreciation for that. And a deep love for that. Because I think she and I come from this, where we come from the same space, we're looking for the same thing, but we're just kind of looking at, at it 
differently. I won't say anything bad about her. I love her and I love everything about her. Uh, but I did my reading with fairy tale cards. I didn't understand it, so I pulled one card from this deck and I went, oh, okay, that makes sense. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to pull the same reading from this deck that I did with the old deck and see what happens. I'm like, oh, that makes total sense. So I think there is something deeper to the to the fairy tale cards that I'm not quite getting, or maybe I'm overthinking it. Because you know, it's 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 oracle cards. They're tarot cards. They're they're supposed to be deeper meaning and hidden meaning. And um, Joy Hellman has a group on Facebook, and for the life of me, I don't remember the name of it, and I don't know. I am slowly getting out of Facebook. I am leaving all the groups. I am leaving everything. Um, the only reason I post now is basically for family. And even then, I try and keep it to a bare minimum. I mean, if I spend five minutes on Facebook per week, that's way too much. Um, so I'm slowly pulling out of it. Oh, Joy Hellman. She has this group. I'll see if I can find it. Um, that she is taking, and it's not like, oh, it's a workshop. It's just a group that she started because this is her process and she wanted to share it. She is working through the um, Gaian Tarot deck, which is another one that I love. Uh, my best friend has it, and she loves the energy, and I love the person who created it. And I know it's, I think, Joanna Colbert Powell, and if I said that wrong, I am so, so sorry. Um... But she takes one card per week. She will journal with that card, write a story, write some poetry, make collages, do some sketching. Not about, it's not like she's digging through the book that comes with the card going, oh, this is what it's supposed to mean. I should be writing about this. It's like she sits with the card intuitively and works with it that way. And I think that is the process that I'm going to have to do with these cards to get deeper into them. And um, part of Joy's process is at the end of the week she's making a soul collage just trademark, register all that, just let me put that in there just God forbid um, a soul collage card based on her experience that week with that tarot card and it's a beautiful thing and people are sharing some amazing things and I keep looking at this fairy tale deck going that's where I need to go with it so I think I have blathered on for long enough this week and, yeah, I've definitely brought it on, so I'm just going to say bye, thank you for listening, and I will see you again next week.